This is a video about the AQA A-level chemistry topic of IUPAC nomenclature rules. Now that initial topic comes right at the start of organic chemistry and it's actually really limited, but it doesn't make sense to me to just teach that first tiny bit and then keep coming back to it as new rules occur. So this is one massive video covering rules you'll need throughout the first several chapters of organic chemistry. You might find that it makes sense to just watch parts of it and then come back as you go through the course and start needing more and more of this information. First of all, who are IUPAC and why do we care what they think? Well, IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And basically what they're responsible for is coming up with a single set of naming things that is used across all scientists in all countries. So the easiest way to think of this is a bit like how in biology, even though scientists in different countries might have a different common name for the same animal or plant or fungus, when they're writing their scientific research, they will all use the binomial name. So something like Homo sapiens or Urtica dioica. And that way, all these scientists working in different countries can really easily understand each other and there's no confusion. So in that same way, lots of chemicals have common names, um, like this molecule here is commonly referred to as isooctane. So it's called octane because it's got um, eight carbons in it. And then it's isooctane because it's an isomer of octane. It's got its atoms arranged in a slightly different way. But it's entirely possible that someone in a different country might think that a different isomer of octane was isooctane. So instead of having these common names that could lead to confusion, IUPAC have one straightforward way of naming things that we all learn and we all use in formal writing and documentation. Nomenclature at GCSE was restricted to the first four alkanes and the first four alkenes and so on. And similarly, there are limits placed on what AQA can expect you to know. So the first bit of the specification talks about you making use of the IUPAC rules for nomenclature, and they just restrict it to carbon chains and carbon rings with up to six carbon atoms in each. Now, that doesn't mean they can't ask you about a molecule that has more carbons in it than that. It just means that if they're going to, they're going to have to give you a little bit of a clue for what the prefix is. So the ones that you absolutely definitely have to know are one to six. And to be honest, one to five should be familiar from GCSE and then six is really easy. So one, of course, is meth like methane. Two is eth. Three is prop. Four is but five is pent like a pentagon and six is hex like a hexagon now of course we don't just have chains here we also have rings but naming rings is really easy because you just include the prefix cyclo so for instance cyclohexane looks like this now of course we don't just have the prefix which tells us how many carbons there are we also have the suffix which tells us what kind of molecule it is so at GCSE, you already met alkanes and alkenes, so you know that the suffix for them is ane and ene. So you could have ethane or propene. Now, if you took um, GCSE chemistry, triple science, then you would also have met alcohols and carboxylic acids, or at least a subsection of them. So officially, the suffix for alcohol is ol. Realistically, though, all of the alcohols you've met so far are based on an alkane. So it's like an alkane where we've taken off one of the hydrogens and put um, an OH instead. So we've always used anol, as in eth anol. So that's made up of the OL, which is for the alcohol bit, and then the AN that comes before it is because we're working from the basis of an alkane. So you are going to encounter some alcohols in your life that are not based on an alkane, in which case you might have um, a suffix of something like enol if it's based on an alkene, say. Then carboxylic acid, the suffix is oic acid. And again, the only carboxylic acids you've met so far in GCSE were based on an alkane with this carboxylic acid group on the end. So, so far, you've only met anoic acid. Now, aldehydes and ketones are new to you. Um, we're going to meet them in a little bit. So aldehydes have the suffix al and ketones have the suffix own. And likewise, you're mainly going to meet them in an alkane context. So you're mainly going to meet molecules that are um, anal at the end or anone. So say ethanal or propanone. So hopefully you're already kind of familiar with how the system works, even if you weren't familiar with the um, prefix of hex of six, or if you'd never heard of aldehydes and ketones. But just to make sure you understand what we're talking about, let's look at this molecule together. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is count the number of carbons. So I've got one, two, three, four. Four carbons tells me that my prefix for this molecule is but. Then I'm going to look for the functional group, which here is the COOH at the end. And I know that that represents carboxylic acid, and therefore this is going to be butanoic acid. So now is an opportunity for you to pause the video and check that you can name these five molecules. There is one in there that could trip you up if you haven't already watched the functional groups video. Um, but bearing in mind, I've told you there are only two new classes of molecules that you haven't met before. You can probably figure out what it's going to be. So this first molecule is an alkane, which you met at GCC anyway. You can count up that it has six carbons and therefore it's going to be hexane. The second one, again, should be very familiar from GCSE chemistry, and this is ethene. This third one should be OK, provided you did GCSE chemistry or triple science. If you did combined science, you might not be used to recognising carboxylic acids yet, but you can see that it's got five carbons in the chain. Remember that you do need to count that one that is in the functional group as well. So this is going to be pentanoic acid. Then at the top, we've got methanol. And this last one, which is a little bit new and tricky, um, that double bond to the oxygen and a single bond to the hydrogen tells me that this is an aldehyde. So this is going to be ethanol. It's now time to add the third piece of the puzzle. So our first two pieces were how many carbons does this molecule have and which homologous series is it in? Which class of molecules is it in? And those two pieces of information gave us a prefix and a suffix. Now, we can do slightly smaller scale editing than this, where we just change out one atom for something else. Um, and what we're going to change it out for is called a substituent group. So it sounds a little bit like substitute, and that's a good way of thinking of it. So we're going to take out one of the hydrogens from an alkene or an alkane or whatever and replace it with something slightly more interesting. And this isn't going to give us a whole new homologous series. Um, with a, a new um, functional group and things, but we need to sort of indicate somehow that whatever we put in is there. So the most straightforward ones would be adding our halogens, our group seven atoms. So if you take an alkane or an alkene or an alcohol, whatever, and you take away one of the hydrogens um, and you replace it with a fluorine, then you then have fluoro. So this is a new prefix that's going on the front of the prefix for the number of carbons. So say we could have fluoromethane or fluoroethene or fluoropropanol or something like that. Um, then if we replace the hydrogen with a chlorine instead, very similar, it's going to be chloro whatever. Um, if it's a bromine, then it's bromo. If it's an iodine, then it's iodo. Um, we can also add in alkyl groups. Um, so an alkyl group is basically an alkane where you've taken off one hydrogen so that you can bond it into something else. Um, so these are going to come off our main chain, um, like little extra bits pointing out the side. So the simplest alkyl group is called a methyl group. And so that would just become, say, methyl propane. And then we've also got this OH here. And you might be thinking, well, hang on a second. Surely an OH would make it an alcohol. Now, if I've taken an alkane and the only thing that I've done is change one hydrogen for this hydroxy group, this OH, then yes, it absolutely would be an alcohol and we would name it like that. However, sometimes you're going to have um, this OH group, this hydroxy group, this alcohol group, and you're also going to have something else, a different functional group that is more important. We say it's higher priority. Um, so say carboxylic acid, that is your highest priority functional group. If something has a carboxylic acid, group on it, you name it as a carboxylic acid, regardless of what else it has. But what if it has a carboxylic acid group and it also has a hydroxy group? Well, in that case, we need to have a different way of naming it. Um, and that is to put hydroxy on the front of it. So say you could have hydroxy ethanoic acid and that would be ethanoic acid, but where you've taken off one of the hydrogens and replaced it with OH instead. So quick example, if we drew this molecule here, to name it, we would start off by looking at the number of carbons. We'd say, oh, there's two carbons in the longest chain. I mean, it only has one chain. So its basic name is going to be ethane, but it's got an iodine atom added into it. So instead, it's going to be iodoethane. Time for another progress check. So pause the video and see if you can name these five molecules. The first two are quite easy. They're both based on the smallest alkane, methane. So we've got fluoromethane and chloromethane. 
Then we've got a slightly longer carbon chain. So two carbons would be eth or eth. So this is going to be bromoethane. Then we've got, um, like we said, this sort of complicated situation where we've got um, a carboxylic acid um, on the right hand side. And then we've also got this hydroxy group on the left hand side. So this is going to be hydroxyethanoic acid. Make sure that you've got eth because you've got two carbons. Um, you include both of them, even though one of them is part of the functional group. And then lastly, um, this would be a propane molecule, but we've added a methyl group. So this is going to be methyl propane. So I actually had to work quite hard to find examples for those last two progress checks. And the reason why is that I was trying to avoid this next thing. So um, in small molecules, or if we're talking about a functional group like a carboxylic acid, there might only be one place that the, um, the substituent group or the functional group could be. But as we get larger and larger carbon chains, then um, that functional group might be in a different place or that substituent group might be in a different place. And that is going to affect the chemistry of the molecule. So we need to take that into account in our naming. So this first molecule here, you can see it's got a three carbon chain. So we're starting from thinking propane, but we can see it's got an OH group. So that makes it propanol. But we want to know where that OH group is. So you can see here that um, in this first picture, it's right at the end of the chain. It's the very first position it could be. So we're going to call this propan one ol. So you can see there that we've put the one with the ol to say that that's the functional group that we're interested in. Now, this second molecule here um, is often referred to as isopropanol, but like we described, we have to use our IUPAC naming conventions. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to say, OK, this is on carbon number two, so it's going to be propan 2 Now, this third one is where it gets ever so slightly tricky. It's not that hard once you know what you're looking for. Um, you might be looking at this and thinking perhaps it's propan 3 but actually, no. This is going to be propan 1 ol again, and this is a really common mistake if you're just starting out in naming things. Um, so the reason is it doesn't matter which way round the molecule is drawn on the page. What matters is how close to the end that OH is. Um, so we can count from the left or we can count from the right. Um, and we're just looking for the smallest possible number. So a similar situation here, we've got a four carbon chain, that means but, we've got a double carbon carbon bond, so that means ene, um, and this first um, alkene, the bond starts with carbon number one. So this is going to be but one ene, and then below it is but two ene. But this third one here is going to be but one ene again, because we're just looking for the smallest possible number to use. So we go from the right rather than from the left. Now, the one thing you do need to watch out for is that we're only going to use numbers when we need to use numbers. So with these butene molecules, we do. Um, but if I think about um, propene, then there's only one place that that double bond can be. So you can draw it on the left as I've drawn it here and you could draw it on the right. But both of those would be prop one ene. So there's actually no point in um, in writing a number in. So we just call it propene. And then likewise, again, we're going to have one bromopropane, two fluoropropane, but one chloropropane, because again, it doesn't matter whether we count from left or right, we're just going for the smallest possible number. Now, you do need to watch out with methyl groups. So this is that CH3, it's basically methane with a hydrogen mist off. Or I suppose I should say alkyl groups in general, because this doesn't just apply to methyl groups. And in fact, it's going to be more of a problem when you've got ethyl and propyl and butyl groups. Um, and the problem is that we are always counting the longest possible carbon chain. And that's not necessarily the carbon chain that goes left to right. So here we've got basically octane, but we've added in this methyl group. So this one here would be um, two methyl octane. And that's fine and straightforward. But if I move that methyl group from the second carbon to the last carbon, then suddenly I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's one methyl octane, but it's actually not. This is going to be nonane because my longest carbon chain is nine. It doesn't matter that it's been drawn with a right angle in there. And this is going to be particularly tricky when you get molecules that have lots of different groups coming off them and you've got to try and figure out what the longest chain would be. So just pause the video and double check that you have understood how to name this next group of molecules. 
So here we've got a five carbon chain. That means pent. It's an alcohol, so it's going to finish with anol. And the hydroxy group is on the second carbon from the end. So this is going to be pentan-2-ol. Then we've got an alkene with six carbons. So that's going to be hex and ene. Um, and the, um, the double bond is going to start from the first carbon on the right hand side. So it's going to be hex one ene. And then finally, we've got um, two bromobutane. Now, what about if we've got two substituent groups? So here I've got two hydroxy groups. I've got one on the second carbon from the left and one right on the right hand side. So the first thing I want to do um, is just think what's the overall molecule going to be. So it's got a five carbon chain. It's going to be some variety of pentanol. Next, I'm going to think about my, my numbers. So if I numbered from the left, I've had two and five. If I numbered from the right, I'd have one and four. So I need to be consistent. I can't sort of use one and two. I can't use both naming systems. So I'm going to pick whatever has the smaller numbers. So here I'm going to go one and four. So this is going to be um, pentane one, four. So I do a, um, a hyphen before the number and then a comma between the numbers. And then I'm going to say diol to say that there are two alcohol groups. Or if there were three alcohol groups, I would say triol. So similar idea here, my basic molecule is ethane. I've got two fluorines, they're both on the same carbon. So we're gonna treat that carbon as number one. So this is going to be one, one difluoroethane. So let's now pause and have a look at this um, slightly complicated alkane molecule and see whether we can name this. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that it has got a five carbon chain left to right. So I'm thinking it's gonna be something based on pentane. Then I'm going to have a look at these um, methyl groups and I'm just going to double check that they are only methyl rather than ethyl or propyl. Because if it was ethyl or propyl, then actually five carbons might not be my longest chain. It doesn't have to be the chain left to right. You're just looking for the longest carbon chain. Um, so I then clocked that they are on carbon number two, carbon number two and carbon number four. And so I'm going to name this two, two, four try methyl pentane. I've already mentioned a situation in which you could have a molecule that has both a carboxylic acid functional group on one end and a hydroxy or alcohol group somewhere else in the molecule. And this is not that uncommon a thing. You can have a situation where you have more than one interesting thing happening with your molecule. So the first thing that we need to do is decide what is the most important functional group or what we strictly call the highest priority functional group. And as I mentioned earlier, carboxylic acid wins everything. So if you have a carboxylic acid group, a COOH, then you're going to name it as a carboxylic acid, regardless of anything else that is going on with the molecule. And then we go down through nitrile, aldehyde, ketone, alcohol, double bond for alkene, um, if you've got halogens or if you've got methyls, they are so unimportant, um, they don't ever have a suffix. So you, you would be naming it like fluoroethane or um, methyl octane or whatever. Um, so they're never going to have a, a suffix. So it's important to work out what our most important functional group is for two reasons. One is because it's going to give us that suffix, that surname for the molecule. And the other is because it's going to tell us where carbon number one is. So say if we look at this molecule here, we've got the carboxylic acid group on the right hand side. We've got the fluorine on the left hand side. So if it was just fluorine on its own and other than that, we just have propane, we would start counting from carbon number one being fluorine. But here, because that carboxylic acid group is that highest priority functional group, that is going to be carbon number one. And we're going to count from right to left. So that means that this molecule is going to be a three fluoropropanoic acid. Now, it's also possible that you have more than one substituent group. Um, so these are the ones that are going to have prefixes. And the rule with these is that you're going to number from the smallest number that you can. And then you're going to write them in alphabetical order. So if we replace one of our hydrogens here with a hydroxy group, then this is going to become 3-fluoro-2-hydroxypropanoic acid. Um, the hydroxy comes after the fluoro because H comes after F in the alphabet. It's not to do with the numbers, but we're still numbering from that priority one carbon on the right hand side. Then if I swapped that hydroxy out for a chlorine, 
I would have 2-chloro-3-fluoropropanoic acid. So it's not that the fluorine was coming first because it was most reactive or anything, it's purely the alphabetical order. Okay, so here is one final molecule for us to have a go at naming. So pause the video, write down what you think it is, and then I'll go through the answer. The first trap that you might have fallen into with this molecule is that if we look at it and we just read it left to right, we might think this is a molecule with five carbons in its chain and we might be trying to call it pent something. But actually, if you look down at the substituent groups, we've got this ethyl group hanging off carbon number two. And so actually, it's possible if we include that and go up and round to the right for us to include um, a carbon chain of six in our molecule. So actually, our basic name is going to be hexane. We don't have a sort of proper functional group in there, so it's not going to be hexanoic acid or hexanol or something, just hexane. Now we're going to think about our substituent groups. We've got this fluorine, and we've got the chlorine, and we've got the methyl. And we could either count from the bottom up, in which case fluorine is on number two, or we could count from the right to the left, in which case chlorine is on number three. So the smaller number is two, so we're going to count from the bottom up. So I've got fluorine and I've got a methyl group and I've got chlorine. But of course, when it comes to the name, we're going to write these in alphabetical order. So the chlorine needs to come before the fluorine. So therefore, we're going to have 4-chloro-2-fluoro-3-methyl-hexane. Thank you very much for watching. Some of this video will make a lot more sense once you're a bit deeper into the organic course, so I'd recommend bookmarking it and coming back to it as you meet the different functional groups. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-Level Chemistry videos coming soon.